healthy and we are ready for game time. What do the Niners need to happen for tomorrow against the Seahawks? And what do we make of the end of the Carlos Correa saga? So to break it all down, I am joined now by 95.7 The Game host and my good friend Damon Bruce. Hi, Damon. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good. Good morning, Gianna. Good morning. All right, let's dive right in because I want to get a lot of your perspective on this. There will be a lot of pressure on Brock Purdy tomorrow. How confident are you in the young quarterback? You know, he hasn't given me a reason to be unconfident, and I don't think he's given a single reason to any of his teammates to be unconfident, and that's what's so special about this story. He plays like a 10-year NFL vet, and he hasn't even had 10 starts in this league yet. It's something else. Kyle Shanahan has designed an offense that really isn't quarterback centric and Brock Purdy has figured out a way to come in and just run this thing smoothly. I don't know if there's been any drop off and I think there's an argument you can make that says they've even been better with Brock Purdy and that's not how football's supposed to work but that's how the 49ers got it work and it's a remarkable story. And by the way, my wife Jillian would would also like to meet Jimmy Garoppolo still. He's still on the list, I think, for a lot of people, Damon. Yeah, Amanda, too, by the way. I think we're all on board with that one. <laughs> all right, Damon. So, yeah, Brock Purdy, great under pressure. He really has a lot of confidence on the field. But what are some of the X factors for Saturday's game? What 49ers or what play? What are they focusing on to win and move forward? I mean, I think the biggest X factor it's going to be out there on the field for both teams. It's going to be the weather. That's the one thing that can take what you expect of a football game and turn it on its head quickly. So the weather is a massive X factor, and because of that, the running game is going to be even more emphasized. Christian McCaffrey is one of the great midseason trades in NFL history for the 49ers. He's been the skeleton key that has unlocked this offense probably more than, than any one individual. But the man behind him is going to be very important come Saturday morning afternoon as well. And Elijah Mitchell is my official X factor. The backup running back, a guy who was a rookie last year and had a monster contribution all last year, has been shelved with injury for the most part of this year. He's been out of sight, out of mind. I think Elijah Mitchell is going to help the 49ers get past the Seahawks with a big day on the ground, complimenting Christian McCaffrey. All right, well, everyone's got all eyes pointed on the Niners to win as well. Okay, I have to talk about this because this is when I really miss working in sports. This Carlos Correa saga, it's officially finally over. Minnesota Twins, he signed with them a six-year, $200 million contract. All right, are you surprised at all? Did you really expect this to play out this way? And why didn't the Giants jump back in? So many questions. I, I don't think the Giants jumped back in because they weren't invited to. They really misplayed the Carlos Correa thing beyond the uh you know the the physical that he flunked the fact that it got so far down the road to where he flew his entire family in and were wearing their easter sunday best waiting in a hotel room waiting for an introductory press conference you can't let that happen you you just can't let that happen the giants got a lot of egg on their face whether they avoided the player for the right reasons or not. It got way too far down the road, and I think it got personal and offensive to Team Correa, shall we say, the way the Giants handled it. It is a shame that they didn't come back. It is a good player. I'm actually happy for the Minnesota Twins. It takes an unforeseen set of events for Minnesota to get anything in baseball. Like, the, the, the Twins fans get nothing, basically, in their lives since Kirby Puckett. So, good for them, but the Giants have a lot of egg on their face and beyond the Carlos Correa non-signing, this is just bad word of mouth about the organization. And this has got nothing to do with the medical exam. Communication is officially a problem for the Giants front office, whether it be with an agent that they're negotiating, their own players, or you know, with the next class of free agents. And it's why they haven't landed any marquee free agents in a very, very long time. They got a problem. I don't know exactly what it is, but nobody takes their money. And now Carlos Correa is actually taking less money to go play somewhere else when it's all said and done. And that's a problem. It is a problem. And you're right. We are in the business of communication. So maybe we should go hold a seminar and help them out a little bit because they need a little help, Damon. You're probably better at that than I am. You play better in the corporate boardroom than I certainly would. So you conduct that seminar. I'll just be there nodding and say, she's right. Listen to her. I like it, Damon. I like it. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us today, and I will see you soon. Good morning and take care. Goodbye. We love you. See you soon. All right. Well, of course.